It's Ray Attrell, advisor to Tall Ship Capital and Forecast, is in Sydney for us. So, Ray, you uh, may have just heard what John Taylor was saying. He says it's all for one and one for all. That's the only way that this Euro debt crisis can possibly be solved. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. John always makes complete sense on uh, matters concerning the euro, and I think that you know Irish bailout, whether that automatically begats a bailout for Portugal and we move on to Spain, ultimately, or in the bigger picture, uh, we're going to have to see increasingly large fiscal transfers or structural moves towards increased fiscal integration within the eurozone area, and that inevitably means larger transfers from Germany and the rich northern uh, northern country participants in the euro and then their southern neighbours. That's really the only way that ultimately uh, this problem is going to be solved because, as John also pointed out, um, you know, fiscal austerity in the face of what is going to be, in any event, very weak growth numbers for the next couple of years, acts pro-cyclically. It will put further downward pressure on growth. If you look at the Irish growth estimates for 2011-2012 contained within the budget released last night, you know, what you see is they're forecasting growth of 1.7% in 2010, uh, 2011, sorry, 3.2% in 2012. You look at, a, at the example of Iceland, which has uh, enormous parallels with the implosion in the Irish financial system. They are only now coming back into positive growth two years after their own financial crisis. So I think it's naive to expect that uh, Ireland is going to undertake the scale of fiscal austerity implied by the budget. Uh, without also suffering uh, negative growth for the next year or two as a consequence of that. But this quasi-fiscal union that you suggest and Trichet has suggested and Dominic Strauss-Kahn has indicated maybe the only way uh, to solve this crisis, it's not going to happen, is it? Because Germany isn't on board. Well, Germany isn't on board today, but I think with the case of Germany, they, they speak loudly, but maybe carrying a rather small stick. And ultimately, Germany has a decision to make. Either it's going to have to sanction uh, the inevitability of closer fiscal integration, and in the short term, medium term at least, that will inevitably mean more strains on German fiscal position in terms of transfers to those poorer neighbours. Um, the, the alternative is to say, we're fed up with this, we're not going to play the Euro game, this isn't the club that we signed up for. And makes uh, overtures about leaving the euro area, which is indeed what German Chancellor Angela Merkel was reported to have uh, said to her Greek counterpart uh, a week or so ago. The consequences of that, of course, would be uh, a, a re the resurrection of the Deutschmark, which would immediately appreciate by probably 30 or 40 percent, with devastating consequences for German industry. So in a sense, Germany is almost uh, damned if it does and damned if it doesn't. So, And I think the rhetoric that we're hearing out of them now is, is not necessarily what we're going to be hearing over the course of 20 so, Ray, what does it all mean for the euro? Does it hit parity sometime over the next year with the dollar? Well, there are three big influences on the euro-dollar exchange rate at the moment, and the unfolding situation in the eurozone is only one of them. Another is the fate of uh, U.S. bond yields relative to their eurozone peers, and obviously that big backup that we've seen in U.S. yields following the uh, the bipartisan deal on the uh, the, the uh, tax deal last night uh, is, a, is a big positive influence for the dollar, other things being equal. Uh, and then the other thing is this risk appetite and the extent to which the Fed's QE2 program will continue continue to drive money overseas from the U.S. into other risk assets. And it's the interplay of those three forces that is really going to determine the fate of the Eurodollar exchange rate in the coming months. And uh, it could equally push Eurodollar down through 120 and down to 110, as it could potentially push it back up to 140. Our best guess is that the dollar will be uh, under upward pressure, driven primarily by rising U.S. bond yields and assuming the ECB continues to provide liquidity for the Eurozone bond market, and that we're more likely to see 120 than back up to 140.